It's wonderful to go to the Word of God to share some wonderful revelation for our edification. I want you to turn your Bibles to Leviticus chapter 10. Leviticus chapter 10, I will be sharing biblical truth with respect to the strange fire that was brought into the house of God. What about you can go in ahead and read from verse 1. I'm going to tell you to stop when I want to, to stop. Leviticus chapter 10 verse 1. Now Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it and laid incense and offered a strange fire before the Lord, which had not commanded them. And fire came out from before the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, This is what the Lord has said. Among those who are near me, I will be sanctified, and before all people, I will be glorified. And Aaron held his place. And Moses called Mishael and Elzaphon, the sons of Uziel, the uncle of Aaron, and said to them, Come near, carry your brothers away from the front of the sanctuary and out of the camp. So they came near and carried them in their coats out of the camp, as Moses had said. We will be spending some time in this wonderful biblical passage. That gives us some revelation about how a servant of God named Aaron, and by the way, Aaron was the old brother of Moses. I hope by reading the book of Exodus, you fully understand the mighty ministry Moses had. Moses was born at a time King Pharaoh took an evil decree to kill all the male children who at the time were born, born of Hebrews. Hebrews. So here we have two sons of Aaron one called Nadab and the other called Abihu, the sons of Aaron. They took either of them a censer. Censer is like uh, uh, this uh, utensil they use to spread perfume and smoke for uh, ceremonial or ritualistic reasons, purposes. How can we, as a Christian family, understand this wonderful biblical passage? As we read, they were killed by God. They were punished by death. They were punished by death. The same day, they were smitten, killed by God who sent the fire that devoured them, meaning that killed them. Why did God kill these two young men, these two sons? They were the son of a high priest called Aaron. Today, Aaron will be like what? A pastor, right? A pastor, um, an apostle in a, in a church. So at a time, Aaron was a prominent figure within the people of God. But what happened is, two of his sons brought inside the house of God strange fire. And today, the house of God can be your own body, is the house of God. Because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, that we are the temple of God, right? Do you remember that verse? We are the temple of God. But 
The house of God can also be the household, like our family, where we dwell, where we raise our kids. So, how can kids, Christian kids nowadays, introduce strange fire in their parents' family? There are many ways kids can introduce in their parents' house, in their household, in their family, in their home, strange fire. I want you kid to understand the seriousness of this situation. The wrath of God is manifested when kids, sons, daughters, introduce in the house where they live strange fire. I hope you understand. So they introduced strange fire and they were killed. They were punished. How many kids in Christian families would have been killed if God wasn't merciful? If God wasn't patient? If God wasn't forgiven? The God who killed Nadab and Abihu is the same God we have today. The only fire we should have in our house is the fire of the Holy Spirit. A house where Christian dwells, a house where Christian dwells, should be a house where we have the utmost holiness, a house of godliness, a house where you don't have strange fire. Strange fire can be evil music you introduce in the house. Strange fire can be video games, filthy website you open from the, uh, the internet. Those are examples of strange fire. The only fire God wants us to have in our house is the fire of godliness, the fire of the fear of the Lord. Lying is another way to introduce strange fire in the house. Defining your body with filthy things, defining your eyes, watching evil things in your phone, in the internet, on TV, evil music. And here we see that Nadab and Abihu, the son of Aaron, Aaron was a prominent spiritual leader at the time. He was the powerful servant of God. Even though he made a lot of mistakes, by the way, one of the mistakes Aaron made is he was prompted by the people to build a golden calf. Because Moses, after spending a long time on Mount Sinai, the people of Israel start to lose patience, start to murmur and say, where is Moses? Because nobody knows what happened to him. So they relinquished their jewelry, burned them in a big furnace, and they molded an idol. Today, we have many types of idol. Things you put in front of God. An idol can be a talisman, like we see in Africa, juju, can be physical. But we have many idols without even knowing. Everything you put in front of God can become an idol. 
Music can become an idol. Your school can become an idol. You spend most of the time studying without even spending a few time to read the Bible. Your school can become an idol. A husband can become an idol for a woman. A wife can become an idol for a man. Kids can become an idol for parents. Everything we put in front of God can become an idol. So, we see here, going back to this wonderful story, we see here that Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, took either of them, his censer, and put fire therein, and put incense thereon, and offered strange fire, and offered. Let's try to analyze the term offer. They thought they were doing was good, but they were wrong. They offered. They were expecting God to say, well done, my servant, Nadab and Abihu. They were sincere, but sincerely wrong. You can be engaged, zealous to serve the Lord, but you can do it the wrong way, with the wrong motives. That's why I always admonish you saying that everything you do should be or must be, rather must be, according to the Word of God. Everything you do. That's why you should read the Bible abundantly. When you're young, trust me, kids, when you're young, you have a lot of time. You have a lot of time. Use that time to go in depth in the Bible. Read the Bible a lot from Genesis to Revelation. One time, two times, many times. Go back and forth. You start from Genesis until Revelation. From Revelation to Genesis, Genesis, Revelation. Memorize the verse. Who knows? Maybe time will come where finding a Bible is going to be difficult. So the only way we will have Bible is in our hearts. That's why I encourage you and encourage you to uh, study the, the Word of God, to study the Bible, to engrave the Bible on the table of your heart. Study the Bible, memorize the Bible, read the Bible. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 4, verses 4, the word coming out of uh, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ's mouth, men shall not live of bread alone, but men shall live of what also? Of every word that proceedeth or proceeds, to say it simply, proceeds out of the mouth of that. Read the Bible shouldn't be burdensome. Because it's life. The truth of God, the word of God is life. The more you read the Bible, the more godly you're going to become. If you don't read the Bible, you're going to be worldly. You're going to act like the world, behave like the world, dress like the world, think like the world. We should think like the word of God. We should speak like the word of God. We should behave like the word of God. That's what it takes to become a Christian. And this is a great warning. Any child who introduces strange fire in their parents' house is worthy of death. I know a few kids who died because they disobeyed to this commandment and introduced strange fire in their parents' house.
Stealing is a strange fire. Smoking weed is a strange fire. Using drug is a strange fire. Everything that is bad. Books with filthy, nasty pictures is strange fire. Do you think it's by coincidence that we have that story? God, centuries ago, prepared those stories for you to have wisdom today. This scripture we're reading today is a great warning for all kids. It's a great warning. Be careful when you bring strange fire in your parents' home. Again, let me summarize. Strange fire can be lying, fighting with each other, quarreling, insulting, lying, stealing, using or consuming substances you're not supposed to consume, watching things you're not supposed to watch. That's why a house where Christians dwell or reside should be a house of the utmost godliness and fear of God. A place where we fear the Lord God. We can be tempted. Everybody can be tempted. Mostly you as young people, you can be tempted. But when you put your strength in God, like this wonderful man, Joseph in Egypt, who was tempted to commit adultery, an abominable act with Joseph, master's wife, he said, I won't commit such a despicable thing and sin against my God. So here, to summarize again, I would like to emphasize, these young men thought they were doing something good. That's why you have, they offered. When you offer something, you want to appear nice, right? You want to be nice. They offered. They say, hey, God, I'm trying to serve you. I'm trying to work for you. Here is the fire. But they did not discern that it was a strange fire. Today, nowadays, as Christians, how can we discern that we have fire coming from God, from the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is power and fire? How can we discern that we have good fire and we don't have strange fire? Do you know the secret? Do you know the tip to discern? It's the Bible. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible is the wonderful and unmatched Word of God. The Bible is the Word of God. The Bible shows us what is evil and what is good. The Bible shows us what is good fire from God and evil fire. Everybody knows that lying to the parents, stealing, doing bad stuff is evil fire. Bringing inside the house strange objects. Hiding those objects from your parents. Pulling from the internet filthy images. Introducing in the house bad music. That's strange fire. And when you bring strange fire, what happened? The same thing that happened to Nadab and Abihu. And bear in mind that they were the son of a man serving God. And kids, be careful. When you have a mom serving God, you have a father serving God, you have to be very, very careful about what you do in that house. Because if you bring something bad to that house, you are exposing yourself to the wrath of God. That's a very encouragement, not only for you here listening to this teaching, but to all Christian kids all over the world. Be careful. 
of what you introduce in your parents' house when they fear God. Our house, a house where people who fear God, who worship God, dwell, that house should be pure, non-polluted, non-contaminated by all evil types of carnality, of sinning. That house should be not only clean physically, but also and mostly spiritually a place where we live love of God. We love each other. We live the love of God. A place where we pray, we worship God. A place of healing. If a neighbor comes, like the neighbor who came a few uh, hours ago, he can discern, even though he's not a Christian, he can discern that this house, there is something powerful. There is something holy. There is something godly in the house. This is a great teaching. Let's be careful as kids. Be careful of what you are introducing in the house of your parents. Be it physical, a physical object. Be it immaterial. Like songs you listening to. You have your earphone, you're listening to a song. Your parents don't know where, what you're listening to. But this song is worshiping demons and the devil. And by the way, let me digress, to, digress a little bit. A song that doesn't glorify God is from the devil. Let me repeat it. A song that does not glorify God is of the devil. Likewise, likewise, a music, a piece of music, music that does not glorify God is of the devil. What is the purpose of the music? Do you know that the devil, before being cast away from the heaven, was the chief musician for the worship of the Almighty God. Music can destroy and indeed destroy life. That's an example. So the music you introduce in your parents' house, things you watch on TV, those are strange fire. So be careful. The two young men here, Nadab and Abihu, the son of Aaron, they thought what they were doing was good. They were offering. Oh, I'm offering my time to God. I'm offering this to God. I'm offering this to God. But they didn't have discernment to find out what they were offering. They had good intention. But they were offering something bad. And what happened? A terrible fire went out from God, from the Lord, and killed them, devoured them. And they died before the Lord. They died. This is the teaching tonight. This is the lesson. Please do not forget that lesson. You may not die immediately, but you are under curse. So, I admonish, I encourage all the kids that introduce strange fire, meaning evil things in their parents' house, I advise them to repent. And if you have uh, something hidden, just get rid of that and repent. Ask God for forgiveness. Repent. Get rid of this evil fire. Evil fire can take many forms. I want you to understand that. One form can be lying to your parents. Another form can be watching filthy things on the internet, on TV, listening to bad music, polluting your mind with nasty thing, uh, things. This is an example of evil fire, a strange fire. Strange! Strange means God does not recognize that. Strange means is an abomination in the eyes of God. 
That's the meaning of strange. And even in English, we have this person, oh, that's strange. Yeah, it's strange. We should have in front of God a wonderful, nice order of godliness. An order on go of godliness must emanate from the way we, be we behave, the way we dress, the way we act, the way we talk. There is the verse that admonishes every Christian about evil work. When we open our mouth to speak, people should hear grace, wisdom, politeness, intelligence, not intelligence according to the world, but intelligence according to God. So I hope this teaching is easy to understand. The lesson is easy. We have here two young men, sons of a minister, sons of a preacher, sons of, sons of a high priest, a very prominent, prominent spiritual figure at the time of Moses, number two after Moses. God did not spare them because they were the son of a high priest. God even expects more from sons of his ministers. God expects more. Because when you are a son of a woman who fear God, you are a daughter of a man who serves God. Oh, kids, be careful. Do not introduce in the house of your parents strange fire. Clean your house. Clean your bedrooms. Take out of your bedrooms anything that's strange fire. Those are objects of death. What was the object of death? What was the object that caused the death of Nadab of Abihu? Strange fire. Nowadays we have many strange fire. Things that does not glorify God. Video games. Everything that is nasty. Everything that's evil. Everything that's filthy. That contaminates or pollutes your mind. Your eyes. Your ears. What you listen to the whole day. What your eyes are seeing on the internet, you can be there hiding from the parent and say, oh, my parent cannot see what I'm doing. I have a very strong passcode on the internet. No, but God is there watching you. God is there seeing what you're doing. You can have good intention, like the young men, the two young men who had good intention. We read that they offered Oh, we offering to God. But God said, no. This is strange fire. I don't recognize that fire. I hope you're going to take heed to this wonderful teaching and get rid of anything that can constitute strange fire. And when you get rid of strange fire from your life and the house where you dwell with your parents, guess what? You have the blessing of God. You're going to be blessed. You're going to have a joyful and prosperous life. A life of godliness. A life of obedience, not only to your parents, but mostly to God. There is a blessing when the only thing we keep in our house is the godly fire, not the strange fire. And what is the godly fire? A family where the Bible is preached and where the Bible is practiced is the family where good fire from God is kept. Where you have love, where you have the fear of sinning. We should hate sin, evil thought, watching evil things on TV. We should run away from this thing. Let's keep Households of Christians, pure, non-polluted, non-contaminated by evil fire. Evil fire causes death. We see here that evil fire 
caused what? Death. There are many kids around the world who got killed because they brought evil fire in their parents' house. And it's even more dangerous when you bring evil fire in a house where people fear God. This is a strong admonition. You see how we can read from the Old Testament? These stories in the Old Testament, they are not there to make your, your Bible <laughs> look thick. They are there for our instruction. Can you see the great instruction we, we got tonight? How two men were killed because they brought to the house of God strange fire, evil things. And the house where people fear God is where God resides. The house where people worship God in spirit and in truth is the house where God dwells. Bringing evil fire where God dwells is bad. 